Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, can everybody hear me all right? Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Corey Falls, and I'm running for Jackson County Sheriff. Uh, I'm a local kid. I grew up in the Valley. I grew up in Rouge. I've lived in Jackson County for a large portion of my life and have a uh, family that lives in a lot of different areas of Jackson County. Uh, my sister lives here in Eagle Point. My parents live in Central Point. So I have a good grasp of, of Jackson County. Uh, I see running for sheriff as a call to public service to improve the quality of life in the county that I grew up in. I've been in law enforcement for uh, about 16 years, and during that time I've built a strong foundation of uh, police uh, leadership and just experience. Uh, and that includes, currently I'm the deputy chief of police uh, at the Ashland Police Department. In that capacity, I've been served as acting chief, I've ran all the divisions of our police department, I've done our budget presentation and narrative, done contract negotiations. I started my law enforcement career in the state of Washington though, and while I was up there I had the opportunity to uh, be on SWAT teams, uh, work as a detective, and I was an NRA firearms instructor. I also worked for Snohomish County Sheriff's Office, which is the third largest sheriff's office in the state of Washington, so this wouldn't be my first time uh, working in a sh sheriff's office. I always tried to balance my uh, law enforcement uh, experience and training with, with a strong foundation in education. And I have a bachelor's degree in health from the University of Montana. I have a master's degree in organizational management. And currently I'm working on my doctorate degree in business administration. So uh, I've, I've built a strong foundation with uh, law enforcement executive leadership and, and education. And I feel that this foundation has uh, prepared me to lead Jackson County and to lead Jackson County into the future. What you would see for me as sheriff is a sheriff that would be open and responsive to the needs of the community. One of the first things I would do as sheriff would be to implement some problem-solving strategies within Jackson County. Because there's a lot of problems, whether it's crime, whether it's drugs, uh, uh, criminal behavior, inadequate jail space, whether it's uh, people just thinking that their constitutional rights are infringed on, or, or GMO issues, whatever they are, uh, I would implement some problem-solving strategies to, to address that in the form of an area command program. It's a big county. We need to break this county down into some sections. I would make sure that we have area commanders out there that are identifying the problems that impact you guys. And what this would do is a couple of things. One, it would improve communication with your sheriff's office. The other thing that we would do is if we broke this county down and had some area commanders out there, we would identify problems that are important to you. And, and then it would help with uh, fiscal management because we would put resources to those problems. We would put the resources uh, to problems that impacted citizens of, of Jackson County. So we would help with that. Hopefully that would learn to lead to some long-term solutions of reducing some of our problems, reducing crime, reducing uh, other issues that we have in, in Jackson County. The other thing I'd like to do as uh, your sheriff is implement a collaborative leadership style. And within the organization, I, I think this would help with, with some of the morale problems that, uh, that uh, the sheriff's office is going through and work together with the sheriff's office to solve problems that once again impact uh, the citizens of Jackson County. I've prepared for this position. I'm extremely prepared for this. And I've done some things locally, uh, countywide, and nationally that I want to talk tell you about uh, some of my accomplishments that, uh, that I want to move forward on. At just at a local level, in my own organization, I have implemented programs. I have overseen our area command program, which has shown to resolve many problems that we have. I have implemented programs uh, like directed patrol to specifically put officers out on the street to solve problems. I've done our budget. I've done our contract negotiations. I've increased the level of cases in our detective division with the same amount of people. At a county level, I'm on the Medford SWAT team, and I've been involved in tactical operations in Medford and Ashland and, and a lot of those situations. I developed the first crisis intervention training program in Jackson County to train officers and train deputies on how to respond to someone who has mental illness who's in a crisis. At the national level, I've been able to present uh, a sexual assault program to a congressional panel for the Department of Defense. I've also been able to go to some national programs uh, including the FBI National Academy and uh, other programs like that. Uh, just to wrap up, I'm running out of time. Uh, if you wonder what other law enforcement agencies think about me, I've been asked by three or four chiefs in the Valley to sit on panels to pick their next leader. So that's the reputation I have. And I'm the only candidate where a law enforcement agency endorses, uh, who's, who's endorsed. So 
thank you guys for your time. Uh, my time's up, and I, I appreciate this. Thanks, Corey. Uh, next up, Bob Sergi. Uh, incidentally, we are taking the candidates in alphabetical order. We didn't just prove to, you know, uh, decide to throw a hat, you know. We take them in order so that uh, we're not uh, given slighting anybody. So, Bob Sergi. Thank you, sir. Thanks for inviting me. I want to introduce my wife, uh, Teresa. She's sitting in front here. I do want to tell you, I'm, I'm not a public speaker. I'd, I'd rather be charging into a building with a barricaded suspect than standing here right now. But, uh, but I do want to talk about uh, effective leadership. It takes trust and respect. When 96% of your employees who voted don't support you, there are issues. It takes a commitment to your employees. They know I care about uh, their well-being. It takes knowledge of the agency and its people. I know their strengths. I know how best to utilize those people. It takes a commitment to your profession. I've been a cop for 34 years. I know what it takes to run an effective law enforcement agency. You can't be an effective leader using fear and intimidation. When your county is second highest in per capita for property crimes, uh, we're not in an effective law enforcement agency. Right now we have two uh, part-time detectives. Uh, they're the only ones investigating uh, property crimes such as burglaries and thefts. Uh, let's talk about management and fiscal responsibility. Winners will talk about balancing his budget, but let's talk about the money wasted. The FLIR, $225,000 piece of item he said at the time it was put on the helicopter to replace 25 deputies. It has not found one person. Uh, the question I have is uh, the missing uh, juveniles in uh, Ashland a couple weeks ago, where was that system when we needed it? Probably wasn't even in the state. Uh, I call this a Pacific Crest Trail fiasco. About $25,000 spent. Uh, about two years ago, winners activated a full SWAT call out three helicopters, what amounted to a dog menacing call. With just a few more questions asked, it would have been determined that it wasn't a SWAT call out and it certainly didn't warrant three helicopters to respond. Let's talk about the uh, Franklin lawsuit, $220,000. Recently lost $220,000 because the, the termination was uh, mishandled and uh, during, during his termination process. Winners will talk about his accomplishments. Let's look at a few of those on his website. He said he received an offer of a free helicopter. So why are we paying $750 to $1,100 an hour for helicopter service? He said Jacknet was reorgan reorganized to uh, SOTNT, that Southern Oregon Tactical Narcotics Team. That does not exist. We currently have one detective and a half clerk time uh, working in MADGE right now. In the current budget, he said he found 783 marijuana plants in 2012, 2013. It was closer to 10. Uh, that was marijuana grows, not plants. Uh, in the same budget, he said that SOTNT sees 101 pounds of, of meth and 54 pounds of heroin. Madge did that. SOTNT doesn't exist. He initiated that. Next our emergency uh, system in the Shady Cove Middle School at a tune of $150,000. He claims they're the first uh, school to, to drastically reduce uh, violence in school. Recently we had a uh, active shooter uh, training at that school. The system failed miserably. He doesn't mention the $100,000. Uh, $1.5 million he spent on the satellite communication system as an accomplishment and on his website. So let's talk about endorsements. That's not time, is it? <laughs> I, I have the overwhelming support of law enforcement community in, the, in, this, in this valley. Uh, former Sheriff Bob Kennedy, uh, I'm 
endorsed by both the fraternal order of police, local and state lodges. I've got multiple retired law enforcement and active uh, uh, officials endorsing me, former prosecutors. Uh, they support me because they trust me. They know I, I'm experienced and well qualified to run the sheriff's office and do it effectively. They know I'll make law enforcement a priority to make uh, the community safer. I'm the most qualified candidate, and I know that agency inside and out and can take immediate steps to change the culture of this agency. I'm done. <laughs> Next up is the incumbent Mike Winters. That's all good. <clears throat> Boy, after that scathing review, you'd think the sheriff's office didn't do anything. I'm not even going to waste time responding to any of that nonsense. The Jackson County Sheriff's Office has done a heck of a job uh, since 2003, and we've been a big part of this community and uh, all of Jackson County. Let me tell you some of the things that Jackson County maybe didn't have that we've implemented. And one of those is the NEXAR system. And I'm proud of that system. You know, we put that, we use drug money to uh, put that in Chingy Cove School. We're looking at some other schools to put it into because we can change the tide of active shooters and we need to keep our kids safe. We started a traffic team in 04. When we started that traffic team, there was 45 fatalities in Jackson County Highways. We were number two in the state. There's been around 20 ever since. We have to manage fatalities, and that's what we do. We have a SWAT unit now, a K-9 unit. We started the Childless Missing Program, Community Service Officer Program, Crime Reports for Civilian Research, a Cold Case Homicide Unit, an Air Rescue Unit, which did find two 15-year-old girls in Ashland within about 20 minutes of being launched uh, two weeks ago. We uh, opened this morning 62 beds at the jail after remodeling that space that uh, we exited and into our new patrol office. We uh, built the emergency communications of Southern Oregon, got the uh, dispatch center off the top of the courthouse, built a, a new facility out at the airport so that if we have any kind of an issue that uh, the heartbeat of the county is not sitting on the oldest building in the, in the county that isn't seismically correct. We started the Corsar program, which is a nine county search and rescue program, the summer program, which has pushed cartels from the southwest Oregon region. That money, uh, folks, is when they grow that dough, they take that money and they turn that marijuana into cash. It's sent down south, uh, the cash, precursors are obtained, and then they bring meth and heroin back into Jackson County. I take it serious. It doesn't make any difference if it's over in Jackson, or in Josephine County. We have it that the market is, is the Rogue Valley. So we have to take the fight to these people. And we've pushed them out of this region. That's why the numbers are down. <clears throat> we've regionalized the Amber Alert. We're the only certified child abduction response team in the state of Oregon. We're one of 20 in the United States. And I'm proud of that. And we are a partner to match the high tech crime unit. Uh, you know, we've done a great job, and I got a great team. With me, it's a business. I'm may maybe I'm not always the, the most popular guy in America, but I work for the taxpayers. You get a return on your investment with me. And when you look at that voter's pamphlet, you'll see that you got every dime you put in. And I've never come back and asked you for another penny. It's all been done on budget each and every time. So I think that's a record to be proud of. Uh, I'm going to stand by it. I encourage you to look at the website. Uh, you know, make your decision. Is it a disgruntled employee, or is it a guy that you have a 12-year record that you can look at? 